there's some practical advice that we can give to customers who are looking at deploying Ethernet as a preferred network strategy for the first time. Uh, we can tour through a four-point plan um, and it's useful actually to, to use an analogy of a road transport system. Let's consider the road network in the UK. Uh, what might things, things might have been like at the start of the, uh, the 20th century versus where we are today. Back then, a little bit before my time, but um, let's consider a journey. Uh, you'd have a very indeterminate estimated time of arrival, let's say. And that would be brought about by the fact that uh, there would be no or very little road signage. Um, you certainly wouldn't have had satellite navigation to guide you through and pinpoint any issues and bottlenecks upstream. If there were any bottlenecks upstream, then it would be very difficult perhaps to plan an alternative, like a redundant connection around to, uh, to achieve the same journey. And certainly there'd be no traffic management mechanisms such as traffic lights, uh, lane discipline, lane priorities and so on. So all these are the things that are, have been brought into the traffic um, infrastructure in, in recent times and we can liken this comparison between a, a poorly managed network and a, a properly uh, coordinated and managed industrial ethernet. First point, it's important really to look and take a top-down approach. Start at the top of the uh, architecture and work our way down. If we liken this to the road analogy, we would be considering in the UK we wouldn't be interested in the towns and the villages downstream, but we would be looking at where do we want to connect our Ethernet backbone, first of all. So we'd be looking at the major cities, we'd be looking at London, Birmingham, Manchester, Glasgow and so on. In the industrial Ethernet world, it's important that we consider the key segments of plant. So take a food and beverage application, we might want to look at uh, raw goods uh, as one area, we might look at processing as another area, maybe packaging as a third area. From there, we'd then need to take a deeper dive into each of those areas and identify really the key components and key devices that we would start our Ethernet backbone. And typically at that level, we'd be looking at PLC, automation controllers and SCADA systems. We can step into point number two of our uh, guideline, if you like. It's important at this stage also to understand really what data and the volumes of data, and the frequency of data refresh that we're moving around this Ethernet backbone, the types of data, the, propriet the, uh, the priority settings and so on, and how it needs to be routed. Take the road analogy again. This is where we might be thinking about bandwidth. So how many lanes do we need? Is it a two lane dual carriageway? Is it three lanes? Is it four according to the volumes and the frequencies of traffic? We might want to consider the surfaces of the roads. So are we talking about a gravel track? versus a high-speed tarmac surface for uh, high-speed motorways. Um, the Ethernet scenario there is looking at the media. Are we looking at copper cable or do we need really to go for certainly for our Ethernet backbone? At this stage we'd perhaps be looking at a fiber optic ring which is giving us a, a bigger throughput and a higher speed and capacity. Back to the roads, we might now want to consider bridges and infrastructure and tunnels to get and navigate to difficult to access locations. That's why we're in the networking scenario, we'd consider copper, fibre, but also maybe Wi-Fi connectivity to those difficult to reach areas. And then finally, in this uh, top level scenario, we'd be looking at uh, routing and so on. In the road scenario, are we lo looking at point to point connections from one town to another? Or are we in fact thinking about ring roads and gyratory systems, which allows traffic to navigate north or south or east or west according to volumes and blockages? That would, in the network world, we'd be looking at redundant ring connectivity to give us a 24 hour seven type of operation. Step three is to do with security. Back to the road analogy, we can consider maybe a toll plaza. Uh, maybe a better example, in fact, would be a passport control station where we have the ability to uh, trap and manage and secure and only allow authorized personnel access to the road system. In the network world, we'd be looking at securing the perimeter typically using industrial Ethernet firewalls. We would want to put points of security, certainly at the external barriers where our um, network potentially links to the outside world. If we're allowing uh, the company's network onto the outside internet, we need to make sure that we have barriers there. But also at an internal level as well, we may well need to consider firewalls and protection between uh, different segments of the business uh, and certainly between the manufacturing levels and maybe the business levels within an organisation. 
Step four, the final point really, is to do with management of data and the diagnostics of data. And again, looking at the road scenario, the road analogy, we can think about traffic lights, management of traffic, one-way systems which are allowing certain traffic only in one way, not another, priority lane management, and of course finally a satellite navigation which, which I mentioned earlier on, which will give us an, a, a helicopter view of the whole network. How do we achieve some of these management and diagnostics facilities? Well, it's largely through the use of um, industrial Ethernet managed switches as opposed to unmanaged switches, which give us a lot of tools and levers and feature sets to allow us to do some of the things I've just described. As far as the satellite navigation is concerned, the equivalent on our industrial Ethernet, that's really through the deployment of a good site-wide software, which provides us with uh, full visibility of nodes and diagnostics and status of the different nodes and what they're up to.